Hello friends, this video on unit and measurement part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. Please make sure that you have watched units and measurement part 1 to part 6 before going ahead with part 7. Now, let us look at another topic that is combination of errors. At certain times, we also need to deal with combination of errors or arithmetic operations over errors. We will see the scenarios in this case. There are three rules for combination of errors. The first rule states, when two physical quantities are added or subtracted, the absolute error in the final result is the sum of the absolute errors in the individual quantities. That means, let us suppose we have two quantities x and y. And x and y together form another quantity z. The rule says that in that case, the error involved in z, that is the absolute error involved in z, will be equal to the sum of the absolute errors involved in x and y. Use, we will now see how. We are saying that z is a physical quantity which is the sum of two physical quantities x and y. Now let us suppose that x, the quantity x involves an, er involves an absolute error of delta x in its measurement and the quantity y involves an error of delta y in its measure. Let us suppose the quantity x involves an error or involves an absolute error of delta x in its measurement and the quantity y involves an error of delta y in its measurement. In that case, the quantity z will also involve some error, say delta z in its measurement. So we will see the relation between all these errors. So in that case, z plus delta, delta z will be equal to x plus delta x plus plus y plus delta y. Correct? Now, we can arrange this equation like x plus y plus delta x plus delta y. Now, if we equate both the sides of the equation, we find equate both sides. What do we see? Z is already equal to x plus y. That was the given condition. Therefore, delta z has to be equal to delta x plus delta y. That means when two quantities are added to give a third quantity, then the absolute errors in the two quantities also add up to give the absolute error in the third quantity. Correct? So, we proved that when two quantities are added or subtracted, the absolute error in the final result is the sum of the absolute errors in the individual quantities. Let us suppose we have two quantities x and y and the third quantity z is equal to the product of x and y. Even here, we assume that x has some error, say delta x involved with it, y has some error, say delta y involved with it. So let us see here. So z plus delta z will be equal to x plus delta x into y plus delta y. Now we can write it xy plus x delta y plus y delta x plus delta x delta y. Now what do we do? Since delta x and delta y both are very small, therefore we ignore this product of two small quantities. This term is ignored. Now we divide the we divide LHS by Z. 
we divide this LHS by Z. So we get 1 plus delta Z by Z. And we divide RHS, we divide this by Z and we divide RHS by XY. So we get 1 plus delta Y by Y plus delta X by X. Now this 1 and 1 will get cancelled. So we get delta Z by Z is equal to delta X by X plus delta Y by Y. So what did we prove? We proved that in case of multiplication, the relative error because this is nothing but relative error. We saw the definition of relative error. It was the ratio of the absolute error to the actual quantity. That means the relative error is equal to the sum of the relative errors of the two quantities. So this is what the rule stated. When two quantities are multiplied or divided, the relative error in the result is the sum of the relative errors in the multipliers. Now you can try the same thing for division. In case of division, you will have z is equal to x divided by y and then you have to proceed in a similar way. If you want, you can try the division on your own. You can try the scenario of division which would be something like this. Now we will see the third rule. Rule number three states, the relative error in a physical quantity raised to the power k is k times the relative error in the physical quantity. Let us suppose we have any physical quantity, say z. Now, if z is defined in terms of any other physical quantity, say a raised to the power k, in that case, the relative error in z will be delta z by z. This will be equal to k times the relative error in a. Is that clear? Yes. So, we can take another example. Let us suppose, let us take, this was a very simple example. Let us take another example. Example number 2. Say z is equal to a to the power 4, b to the power 1 by 3 divided by c to the power 2, d to the power 3 by 2. Let us say z is some quantity which is equal to something like this. In this case, relative error in z will be equal to 4 times the relative error in a plus 1 by 3 the relative error in B plus 2 times the relative error in C plus 3 by 2 times the relative error in D. So whether it is multiplication or division, the relative errors of each of the quantities will get added up and the power will get multiplied. That is the simple funda. Whether it is multiplication or division, the rule will remain the same. So we studied three rules in combination of error. The first rule was whenever two quantities, two physical quantities add to give a third quantity. In that case, the absolute errors of the individual quantities also add up to give the absolute error of the third quantity. Rule number two stated when two physical quantities multiply or divide to give a third quantity then the relative errors of the physical quantities add up to give the relative error of the third quantity. The third rule stated when a physical quantity raised to the power k gives rise to a third physical quantity then the relative error in the final quantity is equal to k times the relative error in the first quantity. Just go through these three slides once again so that you are very clear with all the three rules. Now we will look at some small numerical problems based on these three rules that is based on the combination of errors. Problem 1. The temperatures of two bodies measured by a thermometer are T1 is equal to this, T2 is equal to this. Calculate the temperature difference and error. 
Now, how would you calculate the temperature difference? Very simple. The temperature difference delta T would be equal to T2 minus T1. Now, T2 is 50 degree plus minus 0 0.5 degrees. And T1 is 20 degrees plus minus 0 0.5 degrees. Now, first you subtract the true values that is 50 minus 20 which comes out to be 30 degree Celsius. And what about the errors? We studied that when two quantities add or subtract to give a third quantity, in that case the errors are added up. So in this case, this quantity and this quantity are subtracted to give rise to this quantity. Therefore, the errors involved in these two quantities will add up to form the error of the final quantity. That means this will be equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 that is 1 degree Celsius. So this is the temperature difference and this is the error involved. Clear? Okay. So let us look at another numerical problem. Find the relative error in G where T is equal to 2 pi root over L by G. This is the very famous expression for time period of simple pendulum. That is time period T is equal to 2 pi root over L by G. Now we have to find the relative error in G. So the best way to do is to write this expression in terms of G. You write the expression in this form like G is equal to what? So let us try to do that. In order to get rid of this root over, let us square the equation on both the sides. So this will become 4 pi square L by G. So from here we can write G is equal to 4 pi square L by T square. Now according to rule number 3, delta G by G. Which this is the relative error in G and that is what, what we have been asked in the question. So delta G by G will be equal to 4 pi square is a constant quantity. So delta of 4 pi square, so there is no error involved in a constant quantity because it has a constant value. So we can just ignore the constant quantity. So delta G by G will be equal to delta L by L plus 2 delta T by T. So this is the relative error in G. Very simple, right? So whenever we have to find error in any quantity, you remember one thing that for constant quantities, there is no error involved. So we have to just ignore the constant quantities. And for multiplication or division, we will add up the relative error. For addition or subtraction, we will add up the absolute error. And whenever there is some exponent raised to a quantity, then that exponent will get multiplied to the relative error. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.